Hello everyone. I just recently watched the uh, Netflix uh, series Lost in Space, the uh, reboot, or I, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess reboot of the uh, a classic series. And, you know, have, not having seen a lot of the original series, I saw a few episodes of it uh, back around when the uh, uh, that Lost in Space movie was, was uh, released. Uh, is one of the uh, cable channels I had at the time did a marathon with a number of the uh, classic uh, uh, Lost in Space episodes. And, and, you know, that was kind of uh, amusing. Uh, so I've seen a few episodes. And I have a, f a feel for how the original series went. And I think what Netflix's uh, series here has done, I think it's relatively true to the original notion of Lost in Space but reasonably well updated to uh, more modern sensibilities and to take advantage of the uh, modern special effects and production uh, techniques available today. So I, I can't fault the overall production values of the, sh of the show. Uh, it looks nice. Uh, overall, the, uh, the environments and the and all of that, they, they look pretty nice. Uh, and the show itself was relatively nice to watch. It does have some issues, though. And the biggest, most glaring issues are in the opening episode. Uh, and I wonder if maybe the, the, uh, the producers uh, realized this and put a little bit more effort into... Um, and to making things a bit more plausible scientifically for some of the other episodes. I don't know what order they were produced in, but uh, there, there's a couple of other questionable things later on. But the, uh, the big thing in the opening is first they crash into, the, into basically a glacier. And the Jupiter 2 ends up getting uh, buried in, the, in water. Okay. Uh, under under ice, okay. So okay, that that's fine. That that part I, I can I can get behind. Okay, so they they hit they hit hard. Uh, there's a lot of energy involved. It melts a whole bunch of uh, ice, so they end they end up in a puddle on top of the ice. Okay, that that's fine. I I, I understand that that that's okay. Where it goes wrong though is uh, they're, they set up some drama uh, by, uh, uh, you know, they need some stuff out of the Jupiter 2, but they can't, um, they can't get, get it uh, without going down there, obviously. And the temperature's dropping, and the water's going to freeze, so whoever goes down is going to get stuck. Okay, fine. Uh, that is not so far-fetched. The top of the water could easily freeze over if it's cold enough. And they certainly implied it was cold enough that the water would freeze pretty quickly. Uh, so that part, I'm, I'm not t I don't have a, too much of a bone to pick with that. What I do have an issue with is the insta-freezing water with a sense of dramatic timing that they did. Uh, that is, uh, instead of the water freezing from outside in, from where the cold is, you know, into the, into the water itself, uh, and then ultimately, uh, you know, having to go slowly, it freezes instantly. But it doesn't freeze all at once instantly. Instead, it... Um, it has a sense of dramatic timing so that the person that's coming that's coming up to get out of the uh, the water uh, just about makes it and then gets frozen in place completely. Now this isn't isn't how water behaves unless you're under some fairly extreme pressure. Uh, first of all, for the water to have melted in the first place, a lot of energy has to go into it. And for it to freeze again, all that energy has to come out again. So where did that energy go? It had to have been taken out really fast, yet there was no indication of anything that could have done that. 
Water also expands when it freezes unless it's under a fair amount of pressure. And it clearly wasn't here because it was open to the air. So there should have been, uh, well, there should have been a lot different result. Now, they could, could still have used the ice freezing, like the water freezing, as a dramatic element. But they would have just had to have the top of it freeze. And have it freeze deep enough and get steadily thicker as they're trying to get through it uh, due to the temperature. Uh, instead, they did some sort of thing. They, were, they, they couldn't uh, get, get... They had their, their companion there. Their family member was basically frozen in a block of ice. And uh, now they had to break the, the person out uh, to get them out of there and then they needed some way to to break the ice and the person was going to run out of air um, now I'm not complaining about the temperature being too cold for humans to survive uh, for this particular person because it's a space suit which presumably had some an environmental suit also apparently so it presumably had some sort of uh, a insulation or something like that that would have that would have um, helped in this situation. Uh, they certainly, uh, they, they had, I think, if I recall correctly, a couple of throwaway lines about that. So I, I can give a pass on that, okay? But the, uh, uh, the, the insta-freezing ice with a, a sense of dramatic timing, you know, that, that is the thing like that threw me right out of the show when it happened i'm, I'm looking at that going that's not how water behaves that it, it, that that wouldn't happen um uh, anyway they so then they end up uh, going looking you know, like there's these explosions in the distance which are apparently uh, magnesium or something like that uh, so they go looking for some of that. They go to get it, and, and uh, somehow they can get to the magnesium, uh, you know, a couple of mountain peaks over, and back again in relatively no time on foot. And this spontaneously exploding magnesium, somehow they're able to transport it without it exploding on them. So then they get it back, and then they use that to excavate ice, and it doesn't actually work fast enough, right? So they're they're not uh, they're not making progress. But to make to add insult to injury, it starts raining, and okay, rain maybe, but if it's as cold as they said it was then the rain should have been freezing rain at best. It should have been freezing solid when it hit the ice. But it wasn't. It was pooling in the hole they had excavated, as, you know, they managed to excavate in the ice to get to their family member. And, yeah, that, uh, that just, that's not right. And even if it, uh, it wasn't, freezing rain uh, even if the air temperature had warmed up enough the the, wa the the rain coming down on the ice would either have been melting the ice thus making it easier to get their person out or it would have been freezing on the ice it certainly wouldn't have just been pooling inconveniently in the divot they'd managed to make so, you know, this whole opening episode, the big, um, uh, I guess, uh, the big tension builders just didn't really work. Now, one part that did kind of work was uh, when Will Robinson uh, finds the robot. Uh, they don't explain things particularly clearly, uh, but that's by design. Uh, because Will himself doesn't understand what's going on, but there's some clues going on there. So they eventually, you know, he ends up getting lost down a hole in the ice or something like that and pops up in a forest with a wrecked uh, spaceship or something like that. And, and so he ends up getting saved from some creatures by uh, 
by this robot. And the robot, of course, is the deus ex machina, which uh, saves the uh, Robinson uh, girl who's stuck in the ice. Uh, so uh, over overall, the they they do solve that bit, and and okay, we we've got all that stuff going on, but the, you know, and they set up a whole bunch of other things. There's there's a whole bunch of stuff that's kind of weird. Like there's creatures that eat hydrocarbons. That's that's not so weird really, um, which uh, is what causes them to be stranded because that those things eat all their fuel. Uh, and you know a whole bunch of other things like that. That that basically gets everybody stuck on the on the the planet. Uh, and at this point, it feels like okay, we're into a standard loss in space. They've crashed on this thing and this this planet, and now they're just going to have to rattle around, may, surviving on this planet. Uh, but anyone familiar with the show would the original show be going okay? So where's Doctor Smith and so on and. Uh, it turns out that uh, Dr. Smith uh, is in another uh, Jupiter that also uh, crashed on the planet and, and so on. Uh, and this is where it diverges quite significantly from the original series. Uh, we have a whole bunch of other uh, groups that have also crashed on the planet or la otherwise landed. And they all have the same fuel problem or other issues. Uh, that's not necessarily a problem because it's certainly believable in the setup they did. Uh, there's uh, there's some issues with the backstory which don't don't make a lot of sense, um, and some of it does make sense. Uh, it's the sort of thing people would do and would potentially be able to get away with. Uh, but uh, they do fill in uh, enough details in the backstory for everything that happens in this season to make sense by the end, uh, at least the broad plot strokes. So, so at least there's that. But you know, for the most part, most of the rest, other than that first episode, most of the rest of the stuff that they do is just close enough to plausible reality that it doesn't it doesn't really interfere with at least my suspension of disbelief. Uh, there's only one other major point that uh, that caused me to sit back and go, huh? And that's in uh, with the seventh or eighth or the eighth or ninth episode, I think it is. I think it was the eighth when they're um, they've discovered oh they're, they're, that there might be a source of fuel uh, in uh, one of the crashed Jupiters that didn't get. Um, uh, breached by these creatures. Uh, so they, and it happens to be the one that uh, Smith and uh, this other guy came down in. And it turns out, yeah, that's the case. They get there, they offload the fuel with some shenanigans, uh, and a guy survives in a way that you're going, wait, what? Ha? Huh? That? How did? How did he do that? Well. It's not totally impl implausible, at least. It's, it was at least possible, so we can give that one a, a pass. But it's not the collection of the fuel or the uh, geysers that they're trying to get through and so on to get it back to the uh, main Jupiter there that they were going to... Uh, you know, they were going to distribute the fuel around and get everybody off the... Uh, off the, the the planet, right? No, and in, instead uh, they uh, they end up uh, just about making it across. You know, with the geysers going off and the earthquakes going and so on, and the tanker ends up uh, crashing, getting uh, turned over, and. Uh, there's some other stuff going on there. Uh, and I won't go into that. It's uh, important plot points. But uh, what it boils down to is there's some dialogue that uh, really breaks things. I, we, we don't need to know what the fuel is other than that it's some sort of hydrocarbon-based thing. We don't really need to know that. And the hydrocarbon-based thing was just a, the explanation for what these creatures were, were doing in it. No, and instead, 
Uh, they talk about, they get a little too specific. Uh, they mention that it's pressure, no, it's liquid methane. Uh, well, for methane to be liquid at any reasonable temperature, it has to be pressurized. And they do get that. They talk about the tanker being pressurized. Now, here's where it goes wrong. They show us a picture of the tanker on its side with a rock puncturing it. Well, there's no way that rock puncturing the side of the tanker was going to keep the pressure in. So the methane should have vaporized and escaped if it was liquid. And then when they later when they stand the, the tanker up, the fuel in the tanker pours out like water. It almost certainly was water on set. Uh, but it pours out like water. <laughs> Again, that's not what would have happened. Because we know this has to be basically room temperature type situations here because the people are wandering around not freezing to death in relatively uh, sparse clothing, right? So we know that it, it can't be that. And we also know that the temperature has been getting steadily warmer at this point because of another MacGuffin. Uh, so yeah, there, there's some issues there. Some real issues there. Now, um, if they would have instead just said, okay, it's, it's just the fuel and not bothered naming it or talking about pressurization, then it would have been so much better. Uh, or if they'd use some sort of a name that isn't any known type of uh, molecule or whatever, that would have been fine too. Uh, instead, they had, to, they had to call it liquid methane. Uh, now, maybe they've got some method of li liquidizing methane that doesn't require pressure, but then why mention the pressure thing? So that whole scene breaks as a result of those bits of dialogue. Now, here's the thing. The visualization of the fuel and everything else is not uh, necessarily... Uh, inconsistent over the course of the 10 episodes because we see something similar in uh, the first episode where uh, where uh, they're getting fuel on themselves due to a leaking fuel tank uh, so uh, you know they really needed to put some some thought into they needed to get someone to look over and look for these types of inconsistencies uh, and all it would have taken is to fix the dialogue. Now, I, I wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me if the whole reason this is problematic is because somebody else came through afterward and fixed the dialogue. Uh, you know, it's it's you know the tech babble was what was screwed up basically, uh, and and it was tech babble they didn't even need. They could have just said, "Oh, the uh, the 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 stuff is volatile or flammable or something like that. We don't want it to explode. And they could have uh, said, oh, the uh, tanker's punctured and the, uh, the rock is holding the fuel in. So, uh, you know, we need to be careful here or something like that. It would have been fine. Now, there's a few other things that are a little bit out there, uh, like the... Uh, the fact that uh, the sun for this planet uh, is binary with a black hole, uh, you know, and some other things like that, which they use to drive the plot. And I don't know if they've got the stellar mechanics and so on right, uh, but they talk about detecting Hawking radiation and things like that. And okay, I can kind of buy that. Uh, they do explain the. Uh, the uh, implausibly uh, powerful engine on the colony ship uh, over the course of things, and that's actually part of the uh, setup, the uh, the MacGuffin that's going to drive the plot, I think, in the next season. So overall, uh, those couple of major glaring issues with the uh, uh, well, with the science and so on in the uh, show, uh, it's not too bad. Uh, it, it, mo most of the other stuff that's a little bit out there is, 
know, the same sort of out there that most TV shows tend to do. Uh, you know, like they had this escape from a tar pit that I don't think was particularly plausible, but okay, it was less bad than it could have been, and it didn't require some sort of a Deus Ex Machina to get get them out of it. They got themselves out of the situation, and that that is actually kind of nice you know when you don't need some you don't use some lazy writing trick to get out of it like having some some character show up at just the right time and somehow manage to magic them out now instead they used something that maybe it wouldn't have worked i don't know but at least it's something that they did they took agency and they did something now, I do have an issue with some of the way some of the characters behave over the course of 10 episodes. Um, we have characters that are uh, definitely behaving completely contrary to their own self-interest. That is not necessarily uh, implausible. People are known to act against their self-interest, so uh, I'm, not, I'm not marking things down for that. Uh, what I do wonder, though, is why the uh, some of the characters are allowed to continue rattling around doing the stuff they're doing, um, and you got to wonder why uh, some of the some of the stuff that goes on even happened, because if people would have actually talked to each other, used the bloody radios that they're all carrying. Uh, actually said things instead of beating around the bush long enough that they could be interrupted you know if they if they would have actually just talked to each other uh then so much trouble could have been avoided like if if somebody had sat down and talked to will about the why uh smith was locked up uh maybe he wouldn't have uh, done what he did at, at one point that uh, seriously got things messed up. Uh, maybe if people had actually explained to their prisoner, uh, Smith, what was going on in episode 9, uh, she wouldn't have done the thing that made things go really bad. Um you know, there, there's a lot of things there that uh, could have could have gone quite differently had uh, had people just talked to each other. Uh, and you know, that that might be explainable in some cases, as in there hasn't been enough time, or people haven't actually been in the same room, or whatever. Uh, but that's the thing, it's not clear, like the timeline's a bit murky as well, like uh, how long did some of this stuff take? Oh, that's another issue I have with the, uh, with the whole, uh, whole thing is, it's not clear how geographically spread out everything is. Uh, it appears that the distance between two points on that planet is a, soul, is a function of plot importance of making or not making the trip. So... Yeah, uh, it'd be uh, useful if there was some clear uh, explanation of where things were in relation to each other. But, you know, it's plausible that all of the, the Jupiter uh, uh, ships would have come down in relative close proximity. Since they launched from the interstellar ship, that was, what did they call it, the Resolute, all within a very short period of time. So they would have landed at about the same place on the planet surface so uh, I, I could buy it all being in close proximity what's not clear is how far apart these things actually are anyway overall uh, it's pretty well put together uh, as these things go as a uh, I guess pulp adventure space adventure uh, it goes. It's pretty well put together as those go. Uh, and for the most part, except for a couple of bits where I, I was thrown out of immersion by some absolute dumbness, one of which could could have been fixed in post by uh, 
uh, you know, re-recording some dialogue and using a long shot somewhere, um, or not having some dialogue. And the other could, would have required a bit of reframing, and I and it was in the first episode, the insta freezing water thing, so I could see that one having been, say, the episode that was made uh, as the uh, test to pitch everything, and then uh, and then the rest of it being uh, completed afterward. So I I could see that. Uh, I could see that not being corrected because uh, by the time anyone noticed it. Or realized that that was what was going on. They probably uh, they probably would have had to redo the whole thing, and the cost probably would have been worth it. But what I hope they do in in the future seasons is actually get a science advisor and listen to them. Uh, because if, if they do the science right, at least the basic science. Then their fancy MacGuffins and so on for the science fiction side of things, it'll hang together better. And, you know, getting the basic science right can really work to Im improve the tension. So, yeah, I'm hoping they, they do get a, a science advisor and uh, listen to them to get this stuff right, to avoid the a pressurized tanker with contents that behave like water type uh, problems. And, you know, I hope they don't do the insta-freezing water with a sense of dramatic timing thing again, because that's just, um, yeah, that's just, no. Anyway, uh, overall, I would give it a, a watch recommendation if you're into the uh, science fiction uh, adventure type, uh, type stories. Because as these go, it's pretty good. Uh, and I think, at least so far... It hasn't strayed too far, really, from the original premise. Uh, and I think the end of the, uh, the season finale gets us to the premise. And realistically, uh, if, they don't, if they don't screw up too badly in the next season, then I think overall the, the, the show should have legs. It should, they should be able to... Uh, retain viewers for uh, four or five seasons, and I think that would be—I think that'd be great as long as they don't screw up too badly. I'd like to see where they—they they, they plan to take it. Uh, it should be should be an entertaining ride, if nothing else. And really, that's what you're looking for in your entertainment, right? Entertainment. So anyway, uh, that's really all I have to say about the Lost in Space series uh, from Netflix, the 2018 one. Uh, so I'll leave off here. I mentioned briefly, if you do feel like you need to support my channel or something like that, you can head on over to patreon.com slash lostwizard. You know, send a few bucks my way, if you like. If not, that's fine too. Otherwise, you know, like, comment, subscribe, share, whatever. And if you've listened this long, hey, thanks for listening.